text is Matthew 24, 12. It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, as we open our day and get into this text a little further, we see that not all things that Jesus has declared are pleasant things, but they must be spoken about. We do not glory in love waxing cold in a person, but Jesus told us these things because it's important that the saints are able to discern the, t the signs of the times if they are to pass through well and to be ready to meet the Lord. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of the, of the end, didn't merely satisfy a curiosity that they had, but rather would prepare them for the events that would come. We, knowing of certain upcoming events, like as the end of all things is at hand, Jesus was coming soon, um, we'll be all giving an account at the judgment seat. Um, knowing these things, that causes us to consider what manner of lives that we ought to live. Amen. And then it also enables us to um, arrange our lives around those appointments. Now, since I'm just introducing Brother Jeremy's text, I wanted to... Um, bring out first how the Lord teaches us what to love as well. And at the beginning of, of this um, chapter 24 of where he's at uh, is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read verses 1 and 2 real quick. But when we see that the Lord has instructed us in how and what to love, it's a more serious offense that the love has waxed cold if that's happened. Because, see, he teaches us what to love first. So if that love is not maintained and it waxes cold, that's a serious offense. Um, verses 1 and 2 says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, these disciples of Jesus are trying to impress the Lord with these buildings. After G and this was after Jesus departed. He went out. It says he went out and departed from the temple. That is noteworthy of itself. It's good to be where Christ is, and it's good to leave what he has left. Amen. This, um, this wasn't just any building. It was the temple. All the best materials and craftsmanship were utilized to build it, and to the flesh it did appear quite impressive but you can almost hear the tone in Jesus's response that made it clear that not only was he not impressed but they shouldn't be impressed with it either it was a temporary building that didn't deserve the glory that was assigned to it due to it being temporary and due to the Lord being right there with them the Lord whom the temple was built for was standing in their midst and they were distracted by the temple. What was more sacred, the temple or the one for whom the temple was built? Yes. Jesus revealing Jesus revealing the destruction that would come is what enabled them not to linger there and to keep continue to set their affections there. But then they sought Jesus out privately and inquired about the end of the world. So we can see that the Lord helped, that he instructed them with the truth that it was, it was all going to be destroyed. So not to set your affection on that. The Lord helps and instructs us with the truth to love the right things. Which reminded me of what Brother Given said last night about um, that it's a miracle that we can even love the right things. Because um, it's out of the human realm, out of our senses to be able to to see these things. It's out of the realm of human experience. So it's, it is a miracle that the Lord has opened it up to us. But um, God has revealed to us that all the elements are going to melt with fervent heat and there will be a defacing of all things that are tied to the world and that are unlike God. And that revelation, if believed on, is what will help us and teach us to um, keep us from admiring it or overvaluing it. Um, we see, if we are not in Christ, we will be unlike God and would go down with it. So we seek our refuge and our escape is in Christ. 
he is who we are impressed with. We are impressed with Jesus. This knowledge aids us to love the right things and then to also guard and protect ourselves from becoming one of those in whose love waxes cold. So um, now that God shows us what to love, there is also a need to maintain that love. That's what puts teeth into the truth of a person's love waxing cold, being a very sobering thought. When this happens, it's not due to a deficiency on God's part. It is very important to note that love waxing cold does not mean that they do not love anything at all. It's their love for God and his people and things that are right and good that is waxing cold, which means they have corrupted that love by shifting it to an unworthy object. All persons, things, ideas in which a person can attach a desire or a love or an affection for that is not God, that did not come from God, is inferior to God, and that's what makes it unworthy. Just as Jesus left the temple, he did so knowing it was consigned to destruction, and God is going to disassemble all things that he has left, right down to a stone shall not be left upon one another, upon another. Iniquity abounding and love growing cold is a sign to the saints that what God has said he was what God has said he will do is coming soon. It is also a warning to us not to allow our own love to wax cold. If left to cool, that is a manifestation that the love that God put within you was not maintained, it was not perfected for God. That person was not faithful with what they had been given. In the end, that person will also be disassembled to show what was the essence of that person, and God will be justified in all his doings. He will be, the end of that person will be rendered ruined. And these are, are hard things to say, but it's the truth. They need to be said because we are living in the day of salvation. And there is provision to not end up in that state. There's every provision has been made. Uh, also, the, the text reads, love of many, not love of all. <laughs> Romans 11 speaks of a remnant. So for us, we want to live in such a way that you are a part of the remnant that faithfully endures to the end and is saved. And the text also reads, wax cold, not dead. And one of the things I was thinking about here was in Matthew 12, 20, it says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. Perhaps the Lord will be using you to um, fan a smoking flax in someone, to rekindle that fire of love. And if, if we know that if the love is left, if it's not rekindled, it will grow cold. And it'll die out. But if it is rekindled and piping hot again for the Lord, then um, those people are like a brand plucked from the fire. They're like those in Luke 15. It's like the man who lost the sheep and he found it. And the woman finding her lost coin and the son that returned home to his father. And there's an occasion for much rejoicing in those, in those times. So, um, and I wanted to exhort us today with, um, with this love growing cold. We know that we have an enemy. We, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And when he can get the people to begin to look at one another after the flesh and to kind of start picking at people and to yeah. being offended easily. And did he say that for, or whatever? Mm -hmm. when, you, when those kinds of things start taking places, it neutralizes the connection that the saints have mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. Iniquity will begin to abound and then the love will wax cold. Mm -hmm. We've been knit together in Christ, but if we make place for any of that to happen, that strong bond can begin to unravel mm -hmm. and, the, and the love will wax cold. So let us not be deceived into thinking um, more highly of ourselves than we ought, but to, to consider our brethren and, and their needs first and um, let us endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Amen. Up, brother. Yeah. We live in a dangerous time. 
I know you know that, but we're going to talk about it over and over again until we get to safety. Let us, just, let us go ahead and be real about this. This is danger. We're in danger. We don't want to have anything to do with the world. We're not going to be safe until we get out of here. And because the iniquity shall abound, it shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Do you want that? I don't. No. I know you're here today because you don't want that. Yeah. There's other things you could be doing today. But we have come here together right. to build one another up. To, to increase our love because we see the importance of this. Because we see that the possibility of this is very real. This is a very real danger that we're living in. That this could happen to any of us. You, you're not going to be safe until you get to glory. Yes, amen. In Christ, we, we now have no limit to how close we can get to God. Or how much time we can spend with God. No limit to those who are fighting the good fight of faith. Pushing and stretching out to lay hold of eternal life. 1 Timothy 6.12 If, if you are living in hope with great anticipation of being forever with God. You, you, that's got to be flint. Man, you got to keep that going. I mean, it, it will, you will lose that. That's, there's no guarantee here, brethren. The guarantee is in Christ. As long as you stay in Christ, as long as you stay close to Christ, but you get off in the world, you're in danger. We're in danger right now, but, but as long as we stay close to Christ, we have no limit. If you are running the race, actually running the race, that has been set before you. I know some people say that. That's Hebrew, uh, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Some people say, yeah, I'm, I'm running the race. But you see, they're off in left field. You're, you're running the wrong race, brother. We're talking about the race going to glory. That's the race we're talking about. If you are really resisting the devil, if, if you're really resisting the devil, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. There is a battle here. Yeah. We can't lose our edge. We've got to continue to keep that, that fire going. And this is what we do for one another when we come together. If you're re really resisting. If you have put on the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10. It's not enough that you have it sitting in your bedroom. You've got to put it on. Amen. I mean, we, we've got people who've got, they know about the armor. They know how to put it on, but they don't have it on. What good did, can you go into battle without your armor on and expect it to do you any good? If somebody gets shot, but they had armor that could stop the bullet, it didn't do them any good because they never put it on. So we have no limitations, but the danger is still real. You will not be limited to God's love. You can receive great comfort in knowing that God loves all who love him and his ways. And we are not limited to his love. We can't be taken away or separated. This is good news to God's people as they see iniquity abounding and the love of many waxing cold. See, I, you know, I, brother, I'm going to tell you. I was thinking about this at work and I was just in, choked up in tears thinking about it. I was having a hard time because this is so real. Because I know, I personally know, and I know you personally know people who started off strong and had a love. It was a real love, but it got cold. It got, this is terrible. We're talking about eternal life here. We're talking about separating from God. We're not playing games here. God's not playing games. Amen. We're not going to pretend that fatigue never happens, that those who are presently fighting the good fight of faith never get tired. We're not going to pretend here. We know this is a real, this is a real danger, that fatigue can happen. But see, that's what, brother, we have each other. God has placed us in a body to build one another up, to flame that fire. Mm -hmm. 
that we have the love so that it does not get cold. Why does it get, why does the love wax cold? Why, I mean, the fact that it waxed cold means it was hot, right? You can't have something wax cold unless it was hot to begin with. You gotta have, it's gotta be hot. And then you take it out of the fire and it gets cold, right? I was thinking about this. Why did it get cold? Somewhere they got off track. They got away from where Christ is the one who get. You don't keep, can't go in the world and get this love, brethren. You can't go in. The world has, it doesn't have provision to keep this love going. Amen. It doesn't have this provision to keep the love strong. You, the only place you can get it is with Christ. Amen. So you leave Christ, wax cold is what's going to happen. The love will, it's not that it might, possibly, it will. But as we still may only have a little strength, at times, our strength can be drained. I know that, brother, it can be drained. As we are surrounded by those that their love is waxing cold all around us. We see it happening all around us. It can be weary at times. What do we do? We look to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I say because it's we together we look to Jesus. See, we're helpers of one another's faith. We help each other. Right. We look to Jesus. We will find that the love of Christ will make you strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Christ's love can be poured out into our hearts. Presuming the involvement and fervent desire that you have. God's people, we can fan each other's hearts. Mm -hmm. The flame, we can yeah. get it going, see? That's what we're doing today, this weekend. We're, we're fanning that love that we have. To, it'll just be on fire for the Lord. Amen. We don't want it to grow cold, right? Amen. The love of many waxing cold from the, an absence of of God and an absence of God's people in their life is what happened. Somewhere, somebody got their ear and they got off track. It's a very real danger, brethren. All who are not living by faith do not have the love of God or an ounce of divine safety. There's safety being close to Christ. There's safety being around God's people. When you, this is just the way it is. If you want to spend your time with ungodly people, I know because I go to work every day. I've got, I get to see two sides of, the, of life every day. I go into work. I, I have to sit there. I clock in. I get my stuff ready, and I'm around these ungodly people. It's, it's a tragedy. I, I, I don't even like it. But I have to see it, and I have to be around it. They have, their love is not only cold. It, it, some of these people don't have no love at all for God but then I get to be around your brother and I see it's a different it's all different Amen. you don't want to spend a lot of time with people that Amen. are ungodly yeah. that's just the way it is I don't care if people like that or not but that's the truth yeah. you you they will drain you yeah, that's right. but God's people will fill you God Christ works through his people yeah. see you surround yourself with his people this this is a safety here that God has for us the love of many waxing cold is from an absence of being around God and his people. All who are not living by faith do not have this safety that I'm talking about. This is why we must protect the love we have in Christ to think for one second that we are not being affected is to be naive. Yeah. You're living... Na that's a nice way of saying it. You're living naively mm -hmm. to think that you're not going to be affected yeah, that's right. by positioning yourself that you're not close to God, to Christ, to his people. Yeah. If you are now presently not living by faith, yeah. brethren, you're just not in, safe, in a safe area. Yeah. You're in danger of eternal damnation. Yeah. Eternally separated from your God. The possibility of iniquity and, or moral deterioration, deterioration is very real. 
See, you may think I'm a pretty good person. I can handle this. I'm pretty strong. I've been in the faith for a long time. Now I can handle going about being around ungodly people. <laughs> You're a fool. The love you have is because of your closeness to God. It's because of the closeness you got that you have to God and Him working through the brethren. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's just the truth. The friendship, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. James 4.4 4. So you want to make yourself a friend of the world? Don't think for a second you're going to get provision from God. Don't think that your love will continue to increase. It will decrease. For we know that apart from God many shall be deceived. And iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. This is just what happens to those who can, do not continue with Christ. Now the opposite of that is if you continue with Christ, that's not going to happen. See, you can't, you're going to either wax cold or continue to, your love is going to continue to grow for the Lord. We cannot endure until the end without the love of Christ. When God's people are convinced of this truth, they will hate their lives and they will draw near to Christ who will warm their hearts and produce the full assurance of understanding, Colossians 2.2. 2. It's our understanding, brother, that gives us the affection for this love. The love of many waxing cold is not because they are too close to Christ or spending too much time with Him or that God has given them too much understanding. It's the lack of understanding and the lack of time that they're with Christ and the lack of God's people around them that has caused them the love to wax cold. It's because some have left the first love. In the verse before our text, it says, Many false prophets shall rise up and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, 11. Now, I didn't say all. It said many. Those many were deceived. How do you get deceived? It's because you don't know the truth. Somewhere along the line, your understanding of it has grown, if it was there at all, a it had grown weak. Mm -hmm. You had not given yourself to the Lord. And so here comes a deceiver. Yeah. And all of a sudden he starts talking and you're thinking, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. But it's not because you've been spending too much time with Christ. It's because you've been spending too much time away from yeah. Christ uh -huh. and away from his people. Yeah. This is a real danger to God's people. A real jeopardy to live outside of Christ's love. See, if you wanted to get something when Christ was here, if you wanted to get something from him, you had to be near him. Yeah, that's right. You had to go where he was at. Amen. And if it, you had to get up in a tree to get his attention. Whatever it took, yeah. people did it. Right. They would shout out. And people would say, Shh, quiet. <laughs> Just be quiet. And I, I don't care. Yeah. Don't tell me to be quiet. I want what he has. Right. And I'm going to do whatever I got. See, that, didn't, that never changed, brother. It's still like that today. People are going to tell you, just be quiet. Sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Christ has what I need, and I want it. Amen. I may not have all the understanding, but I know who does. He does. Amen. And I want to be close to him. And I want to be close to those people who are close to him, because I know he's working through them. Amen. Yeah. Well, anyway, anyone be willing or ready to stand against the wiles of the devil, boldly or confidently, that are not convinced of the possibility of danger. You've got to know that you're in danger before you're ready to defend against it. 
the danger of being away from Christ is very real. We do not want to find ourselves in a position that we are cut off from heavenly supplies. I was thinking about this. Brother Bob's got this, this new thing. He's talking about fighting this warfare. You know, you're out there in a battle. You're fighting. And it, it, spiritual life is like this. In the military, when they're fighting in an area, they must have the ability to get supplies. So there has to be an open line there. And if that line is cut off, soon they're going to die out. Their resources will be depleted, and they will grow weak and be overcome. They'll succumb to lack of resources. See, it's the same way with Christ. He, he's got resources, but you have to be able to be there to receive them. You can't be out in the world giving yourself to the world and... Your, your, your supply will be cut off. Amen. You have to be in a position to receive the supplies you need. Because if the enemy can find a way to cut off the supplies, the people will become weak. He'll do it any way he can find it. Distractions, whatever he can find. I mean, there's all, all means of distractions. Distractions that look good on the surface, look nice on the surface, but if your supplies are cut off, that's what happened. Yeah. They got there somewhere along the line, the supplies were cut off. Yeah. And that's how the love the wa it waxed cold. That's what happened. In Christ, we have all we need to endure to the end. Nobody gets weak and falls away because they're getting fed by Christ. It's because they have gone away from Christ. They can make up excuses all day long, but this is why. We do not want to trust in the flesh. Amen. Flesh will move a believer from the love of God, which is in Christ. Flesh will draw, be drawn to the life of ease. This is only a delusion from Satan. The world is not our home. And to find comfort, we must only go to Jesus. Amen. This is true, brother. No matter how impressive the world looks, it is going to be going away. And it has, does not have the supplies you need. It does not have the, the things that you need for life and godliness. It may be impressive, I admit it. But it, it needs to be pushed away. Because Christ is more impressive. Amen. Yes. Our conversation is in heaven, Philippians 3.20. We are strangers and foreigners here, 1 Peter 211, because we are willingly, because we, I'm talking about us, brother, we, because we are willingly crucifying the flesh, denying ungodliness, and worldly lust, God will increase our love. Yes. Yes. If somebody's love isn't increasing, then this isn't happening. They're not crucifying the flesh. They're not denying ungodly lust. They're not, the, the things of the world they're not pushing them away because if they were, God would increase their love. This must happen if we are going to overcome and eat of the tree of life. That's a promise. Yes. To those who continue to increase in love, that means you're, you're connected to Christ. To those who are going to overcome, we're, we're given a promise that you will endure, you will overcome, and you will be with him and partaking of the tree of life. This is a work of God. We are made for God. So if this isn't happening, you have no purpose. Your life is nothing. But if it is, we have this promise, brother. You will not find a love for the world, but your love for God will increase. Like our text says, love of many shall wax cold, but with God we see and perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us, 1 John 3.16. As believers, we do not want to be moved by shallow feelings or circumstances that will pass away. We know and understand this because of Christ. 
Because we, we see what he has done for us. Mm -hmm. If we are not able to reason on what Christ did, what he did for us, we will not see what is up ahead. We'll see, we'll just get bogged down by the things around us. And we'll, the love will grow cold. <laughs> causing one's heart to be deceived and iniquity to abound. And the love of many waxing cold. Mm -hmm. Our love is sustained as we clearly see Christ's death. Yeah. That's why we talk about it. That's why we gather together. That's why we fan that love together. Love waxing cold is because they step out of the arena in which God sustains our love. Because it is God who sustains our love. It is God who continues to build us up and strengthen us. Men can't help you here. I'm talking about men in the world. I'm not talking about God working through men. I'm talking about men in the world. They, they can't help you. Procedures can't help you. You may look good on the outside, but the inside, that's where God looks. God looks on the inside. What do you really love? You can deceive others. You can deceive yourself, but you can't deceive God. Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, he called them out on this. He said, because they had an outward appearance of righteousness, but they were full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Nobody saw that on the outside. Who saw that until Jesus came and called it out? But see, God knows. How could the Pharisees go so wrong? Everything they did wasn't for God. What was done for God. On the outward, right? Their whole lives revolved around doing things for God. Doing things. They were going through all the motions, but they had left their first love. This is a very real danger. The love had waxed cold toward God. They stopped living by faith and were actually living for the world. See, this can be very deceiving. Looking like you're doing all the things supposedly for God, but it's really for the world. See, this is, this is very deceiving. They had a love for the world and the things of the world. You can't serve two masters. You will hate the one and love the other, or else you, he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and men. Luke 16, 13. So this is what I say. We want to serve God. We want to have a love for God, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're fanning that love. Let us not overlook the fact that our text here says, Matthew 24, 12, it says, The love of many shall wax cold. Sister Nikki touched on this. The love of many shall wax cold. That's not all. Many shall wax cold. We don't want to be a part of them, no. right? We don't want to be, a, we want to be a part of, there's a number that cannot be numbered. That's the number we want to be a part of. We, I say we because we're in this together, don't want to be the many. God has a remnant that is a part of a number that cannot be numbered. We want to find those who have a love for God and we want to fan that love. See, we want to come together and grow and get near to Christ and fan our love together, right? Mm -hmm. We, we, you know, when I was little, I remember my uncle telling me, where you see smoke, boy, there's fire. Yeah. See, where you see a brother, it may be weak, mm -hmm. but you can still see a little bit there. You want to fan that. Yeah. You want to yeah. fan that love. Amen. And when we, we come together, that's what we do. We fan that love. We, we, we help it to, to increase He that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Mm -hmm. See, that's what we want to do. We want to keep that love going all the way to the end. We want to keep it going, keep it alive, and that's what we do when we come together. That's a promise to you, brother. You can take that one to the bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That if you endure to the end, you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. God's not going to, you're not going to make it all the way to the end and God turn you away. It's only the, those who 
who gave up, those who, who, who didn't make it to the end, who didn't endure to the end, those are the ones who go, but see, brother, that's not you. See, that's not you. You're here today because God has drawn you to him. God has done a work in you. That's why you're here today. Let us continue to fan that fire of love that God has placed in our hearts that, in, that it may burn for God and his people. So that together we will overcome this world. No believer is alone. He's put us together. You have a fan. I have a fan. And together we'll all be able to fan that love for Christ. And he'll be able to pour his love into us. And that our hearts will be on fire for God. So let us do that, brother. Let us continue in this. That our hearts, not it's like some, some, the hearts will wax cold, but we don't want to be a part of that. We don't want to have anything to do with that. We want to continue in his love. Thank you, brother.